Hi, it's Penny Black and Jill Foster here for another Brushstroke Basics video where I will be demonstrating how to do uh, some stamping and coloring with our Brushstroke stamp called Christmas Berries. Now in this video I will just be showing the basic stamping and inking of the stamp itself, but here's a look at one card idea that you can create using your stamped panel once you are done. And real quick before I begin, I'm just going to pop up all of the supplies that I will be using in creating this uh, stamping and doing this card. And I will put this back up on screen at the very end of the video. So if you want to look at any of those supplies in more detail at that time, just hit pause and you can check it out. To begin, I am stamping this beautiful Christmas berry stamp using the Misty Stamp Positioning Tool. And I'm stamping onto Fabriano Hot Press Watercolor Paper. I find I really like the smoothness of the Hot Press Watercolor Paper in order to capture all of the details of these beautiful brush stroke stamps. Now I inked up the leaves using Ranger Archival ink and it's a mini ink pad. The first color was leaf green and now I'm using Carnation Red on the berries. And then I'm going to go in with a Tombow dual brush pen just to go ahead and get the branches right here. So those are kind of small and you have to get in and around the berries and right up to the leaves. So I found the, find the marker works really well for that. But for areas that are larger, like the leaves and even that cluster of berries, using an ink pad will help you get the most detail and the most even impression just because you can easily apply the ink to those large expanses on the stamp. Now, you could certainly stop right here and you would have a beautiful stamped image to work with on your card, but I love to paint, so I'm going to go in and just add some additional details and shading. I'm using Distress Reinkers used as watercolors, so I've just squeezed several onto an ink palette and I'm just pulling those up and painting them right on top of my stamped image. So the stamped image is a great guide where to add their shading and your areas of light and dark. I also have the stamp pack packaging right off screen um, near me so I can look at those, especially on these areas with the berries where they're sort of layered on top of each other. I'm starting here with the berries that are in sort of the background that have another berry on top of them and I'm putting my darker color right there and that will create the look of one behind the other. Now the archival inks that I initially stamped with, those are a waterproof ink. So when I go in now with the wet paints and the wet water on my brush, they are not going to start to bleed or blend, which makes it really easy to just add your shading right on top of there. And you have a lot of control that way because the stamped ink is not sort of moving around underneath of you when you're adding your color. And I love how once you add just that little touch of shading, how those berries just really come to life and look so three-dimensional. Now I stamped this, just put it right down the center of my, my watercolor paper panel. This is a five by seven panel. But you could certainly do so many different things with this stamp. You could stamp it around the perimeter of the card to sort of create a border of leaves and berries. Um, you could position it sort of hanging down from the sort of that top left with that branch hanging down or even coming up from the bottom. There's lots of different ways that you can use this. But for the purposes of this video, I wanted to be sure that you saw the entire stamped image on the panel. And I will show you at the end of the video a card sample I made using this actual piece that I am painting here. One of the great things I love about this style of brushstroke stamp from Penny Black is once you're done, it looks like you just hand painted this beautiful berries and leaves piece um, on, did a watercolor card and um, it doesn't have the look that it's been stamped. It just looks so watercolory and hand painted. It's really fun and I think quite stunning when you send it off. It's simple but it's also beautiful in its design. So once I did those darker colors on the berries, for the ones in the foreground I'm just sort of painting over the top of them with a layer of the red ink and water mixed in and it just kind of smooths things out. Where I want it to be darker I just add a couple extra layers. 
The first color that I used for shading on those was Fired Brick Distress Reinker, and then I'm also now using some Barn Door. So those are a nice combination of colors if you're looking to do some Christmas reds or berries and have some areas of light and areas of dark. So I just wanted to zoom in here so you could see a little bit closer. I'm adding just a few of these details onto the berries. I'm using some Gathered Twigs Distress Ink Reinker for this, and I've grabbed a smaller paintbrush. The paintbrushes I'm using are silver, black, velvet, round paintbrushes. The first one was size number four, and now this is size number two, which just allows me to easily get these details right here on the berries. And that will also be listed in the supply list at the end of the video. And for this portion of the painting, it's also very handy to have your stamp packaging and the actual stamp itself um, right in front of you, just to get a closer look at these details. It's amazing once you add these on, just every little step, it just starts to come to life even more and more. Now I'm ready to do a little work here on these leaves. Now you can see one of the great things about these brushstroke stamps is they will capture that detail for you when you stamp them. So if you want to go in and just intensify that a little bit like these leaves, the veins and the leaves here, I can look right at it on my stamping that I've done and just go over the top of it. So I don't have to decide where it needs to go or draw it on myself. I'm just basically tracing right on top of that. And then wherever on the stamped image where it shows a little bit darker color, that is where I will add my paint. So I will first put down my brush with the paint in the areas I want to be darker, and then I'll blend it down towards the lighter areas. And I can always go back with some water and blend it even more. Now I'm using the Distress Ink Reinkers on here because I love the intensity of the colors that I can get with those, but you could also um, paint your details on with just standard watercolors. You could add them using colored pencils or even watercolor pencils. Whatever sort of system of coloring that you like, that you prefer and you like to do, will work well. And for these leaves, I'm using a mixture of peeled paint, Distress Ink Reinker used as a watercolor, and also a little bit darker color called Forest Moss. And I'll follow the same process for the other leaves that are a part of the stamp. For the last step, I'm just going over this branch using the Gathered Twigs Distress Ink Reinker. Now that was stamped with a water-soluble marker, so I'm using care not to add too much water so that it doesn't bleed. Here's a look at the finished painted panel. And now using this same panel, I did some masking and distress inking on the center portion of the card. Also a little bit of background stamping, and I stamped my sentiment. And I will link down in the YouTube description box below and ex some examples or videos that show how to do that part. I hope you enjoyed today's Brushstroke Basics video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also connect with Penny Black on Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, Twitter, as well as our website and blog, and I'll link to all of those for you down in the YouTube description box.